Day 3 Today's reading is from the book Genesis, chapter 3, verse 6 to 9. The women saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious, and she wanted the wisdom it would give her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it too. At that moment, their eyes were open, and they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness. So they sawed fig leaves together to cover themselves. When the cool evening breezes were blowing, the man and his wife heard the Lord God walking about in the garden. So they hid from the Lord God among the trees. Then the Lord God called to the men, Where are you? Adam and Eve stood in awe of it, and so can we. The whole world unfolds like an art gallery filled with the glory of God. But what Adam and Eve didn't know was that there is a thief in the art gallery, an enemy of God. Satan is like a wily snake that slithers in at the corner of everything and entangles around you. And if he can trap you with a lie so you fall away from closeness with God, he can snatch your happiness, steal God's glory, swipe away your love for God, and leave you robbed. So that snake sneaked up to Eve, wrapped his own lie tight around her, and hissed his poison right into her heart. God doesn't really love you. God doesn't really give you good enough things. God doesn't really give the gift of love all the time. Eve fell for it. She ate the fruit from that one tree God had forbidden only because He loved her, because He didn't want her to die. But Eve swallowed the fruit's juice and the snake's lie and death began to flow slow through her veins. This is the painful loneliness that we call the fall. Adam and Eve ran and hid and fell away from the closeness of God. When you trip, you can fall and end up such a bloodied mess that you go hide. When you trip, you can fall off the path and end up lost in the long grass. Adam and Eve hid. Adam and Eve were lost. When we've fallen and when we're lost, God comes with one question. Not the question, why did you do that? Not the question, what did you do wrong? The very first God question of the Old Testament of the whole Bible is a love question howling out of God's heart. Where are you? God's love never stops looking for you, trying to find you and gently draw you back close to Him because of his unconditional, unbeatable, unfailing, unwrappable love, your God refuses to give up on you. Your God looks for you when you're lost. Your God calls out for you when you're ashamed and broken and hurting. God doesn't run down the rebel. God doesn't strike down the sinner. God doesn't flog the failure. Whenever you fall, Whenever you fall short, whenever you sin, your God whispers to you with a love that wraps around you like a gentle arm. Wherever you are, I will always come find you. Whatever you've done, I will always keep looking for you until my eyes see you, till my hands of healing reach you, till I can hold you close again to my heart. No matter what the day holds, no matter how the seasons of your life unfolds, God holds you and unfolds you. And what was the very first question of the New Testament of the Bible? The very first question asked in all of the New Testament of the Bible was that of wise men 
asking everyone after Jesus' birth, where is he? Really wise men and women never stop looking for God. And because your really wise God is love, he never stops looking for you. At one wooden tree in the Garden of Eden, we fell for the lie that God didn't love us. And we fell away from God and got lost. And at one wooden cross near the Garden of Gethsemane, God found us and stretched out his arms and proved forever and always and no matter what that he loves us with an unconditional, unbeatable, unfailing, unwrappable love. Sometimes you can almost feel it. When you fall, he comes and unwraps that lying, stealing snake from your feet and wraps his arms around you. And you unwrap the very greatest gift, a love that never ever lets you go.